I picked up a couple of these Valentine's envelopes from Dollar Tree. I already had fun making over one of them if you happen to catch that one, but I had another one and I said that I would give it a little bit of a different finish. And so that's what we're going to do. So I hope that you'll hang out. I hope you're having a good day. First, I went ahead and removed the paper Valentine that came in it. Then I gave it a little bit of a scuff sand. Then I'm going to cover the entire surface with the truffle brown chalk paint. We're going to be separating this and doing two different things to the section of the main part of the envelope and the flap that opens up. And so then I'm going to put on plaster chalk paint. And on this bottom portion of the envelope, while the paint is still wet, you see I have a paint comb. And I'm dragging it horizontally, and then I'm going to turn and drag it uh, vertically as well, and that's going to create this crosshatch type of look, and it's going to give me that faux linen look. We're going to keep layering things, and it just kind of gets brought to life. On the other one, in case you're interested in that, you can go look at the other one at HammondsNest.com. That's my blog. I also have this one up on the blog with all the supply lists and the steps and everything, so um, you can go check it out and see how cool that one turned out. That one I gave a really, really big vintage vibe with Distress Inks um, and glazes and things like that. We're going to make this one a little bit lighter out all the antiquing glaze just to kind of give it a different look and give you some more ideas, which I love to do. And I really love doing variations of the projects. So after all the plaster colored paint is dry, I'm going to take this printable that is actually one of my printables of my Vintage Valentine's bundle. And I, am, I printed it out on decoupage paper, rice paper. And then I'm decoupaging it with Mod Podge onto here. And so I'm going to release that extra paper. And then I'll need a little uh, X-Acto knife to get the rest of the excess paper that runs into the bottom portion of the envelope. So looking good so far. So good. I love the colors of this one. I love this little printable. It's a really pretty design. And I'm able just to feature this little torn paper heart. So I'm going to go ahead and seal that printable. And then we're going to work on the bottom half of the envelope with some sandstone chalk paint. We're going to make a little color wash, which just means you add a little bit of water to the chalk paint. Going to brush it on all over where we crosshatched. Now it looks like I'm covering it up, but it's really just being used as a glaze, but a lighter glaze. So then I'm going to take a baby wipe and I'm going to wipe back all that excess. And it's just leaving this little kind of a more tan haze over that white and brown. Now I'm really thinking this looks like a little envelope. I love it very much. Now we are going to add a little shading and a little antiquing, but really just keep it concentrated around the edges. I've got a little dauber here that I use for some ink blending with the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. And I'm going to do that at the top of the envelope. And then I'm actually, instead of doing any kind of rope like I did on the very first one that I did, I'm just using some ink to make that whole envelope shape. And I love the way that looks. I'm going to come back in a little while with some black ink and just add another layer of color. And now, speaking of printables, these are more printables. This is a printable tag from a sheet that I actually have free up on my blog at HammondsNest.com. And I decided to do a ripped edge on this and use a couple different inks to kind of, you know, make it look older. Crumpled it up. But I'm going to come back. I'm going to do one more thing here in a minute that you'll see that I think even just makes it. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, I'm going to pull that black ink out. Add some of that around the corners. Really just trying to keep it very interesting and create lots of dimension and interest. So now that my tag has got a little hole punched in it, I'm going to set that to the side. I was still undecided. I was still staring at it trying to figure out what to do. But we'll come back to it. And I have my Osnaberg. Uh, fabric that I love so much. I just have a couple rip strips of it. Use a little bow maker and I've got two strips and I'm just tying a very simple kind of a shoestring looking bow except for this is just when you use a little bow maker like this. It's a little different where the knots go. Pull those pieces apart. Now we've got all these embellishments happening. Little button right there looks really good. I think that looks awesome. Oh, here, here it is where I was doing it, where I was taking a little sander to the tag. And I really liked the way it looked after I did that. And I'm going to tie on a little string to the tag. This is just some thin jute string. And that's ready to go. So I'm just getting all my embellishments ready to lay out before I attach them. I also have this little beige baby's breath. So I'm taking a light duty stapler and I'm laying down the tag and the baby's breath first. And then hot gluing the bow on, trimming it up how I want it. I'll put another little piece of baby's breath right there underneath. And then lastly, I did think that the little button needed some distress ink as well. And I am so happy with this one. I think it is so pretty, especially here in this little 
vintage basket I found recently on doing one of my other favorite things, which is thrifting. But I hope you enjoyed this idea. If you need some more Valentine's inspiration, head to my blog. Bye-bye, y'all.